Today I've got a problem from an exam that is suggested lots in the comments. So it's from the JEE Advanced in 2014. And so we don't have a version of this type of exam in the US. So if anyone from India wants to post kind of what all this exam is about in the comments, that would be great. Okay, so let's see what we've got going on here. We want to say that we've got natural numbers a b and c and by natural numbers i mean positive integers and they satisfy this rule that b over a is also a natural number so in other words we say that a divides b or b is a multiple of a so we'll use that next we want to suppose that a b and c are in geometric progression and their arithmetic mean is b plus 2 and then our goal is to find the value of this quantity, which is a squared plus a minus 14 over a plus 1. Okay, so let's maybe get to it. So let's first notice that b over a is a natural number. That implies that b equals n times a for some natural number n. So that's pretty clear. Next, we'll use the fact that a, b, and c are in geometric progression to get a value for c. So notice that b equals n times a, so that means the common ratio of our geometric progression is this number n. So that means that c equals n times b, which is equal to n squared times a. So that's great. We've got a value for a, which we'll just call a. We've got a value for b, which is n times a. And we've got a value for c, which is n squared times a. Now we want to find the arithmetic mean of a, b, and c. But obviously, we'll use these values a, n, a, and n squared a. And so the arithmetic mean of those will be one third a plus n a plus n squared a. But on the other hand, in the problem, we are given that that is equal to b over two. But we know that b is equal to n over a from our earlier discussion. So we can write this as n times a plus two. So next up, maybe what I would like to do is multiply both sides by three. And notice that will give us a plus n times a plus n squared times a equals 3na plus 6. Now we can maybe move this 3na to the other side of the equation and then reorder this a little bit while factoring an a out. Notice that a will be a greatest common factor here. So we can have that this is a times n squared minus 2n plus 1. So I've got minus 2n from moving this 3na over. And then what's left over here on the right hand side is 6. But now notice this is just the square of a binomial. In fact, it's n minus 1 squared. So we can write this as a times n minus 1 quantity squared equals 6. So let's see what we've got. We've got 6 equals a times a perfect square. But the only way to write 6 as a times a perfect square is for a to be equal to 6 and n minus 1 squared to be equal to 1. Notice all other factorizations of 6 will give us something that is not a perfect square. Like we'd, we could factor it like 3 times 2, but there is no square integer that becomes 2, and then so on and so forth for 2 times 3 and 1 times 6. So this tells us that a is equal to 6, but now if a is equal to 6, then our quantity over here is equal to 36 plus 6 minus 14 over 6 plus 1. But now that's a pretty easy calculation. And what we'll get here as, is that the number is 4. So we'll have 28 over 7, which is obviously 4. OK, so maybe what I want to do before we finish this off is tweak this problem a little bit and see if we can get some other interesting result. So I want to replace geometric with arithmetic and arithmetic with geometric. OK, so let's do that. So on the last board, we found out that this quantity in the blue box was equal to 4. And that came from a being equal to 6. Now, I've changed the word arithmetic and geometric to see if we could maybe get a similar result. So now this is inspired by this exam. 
Okay, so we'll start off with the same setup. So we've got B over A is a natural number. So that tells us that B equals N times A. Okay, but let's notice that N times A is equal to A plus N minus one times A. So this n minus 1 times a is like this common addition factor that is creating our arithmetic progression. So from here we can get c is equal to b plus n minus 1 times a. That's going to easily simplify to a plus 2 times n minus 1 times a, which is 2 times n minus 1 times a. So I've just fused these two terms together. So notice we've got a value for a, which is just a. We've got a value for b, which is n times a. And we have a value for c, which is n, 2n minus 1 times a. Now we want to use this fact that their geometric mean is b plus 2 and see if we can get anything out of that. So let's see, the geometric mean of a, b, and c will be the cube root of a, b, c. And this is going to be, this is going to be equal to b plus 2. Okay, so now we can write all of this in terms of a and n given our previous discussion. So here we have this is going to be the cube root of... Well, let's see maybe the best way to write this out. This is going to be n times 2n minus 1 times a cubed is equal to, well, let's see, b plus 2. So that's going to be n a plus 2. Okay, so let's see where we can go from here. So we can maybe factor this a cubed out of the cube root, and that's going to leave us with a times the cube root of, maybe multiply this through, 2n squared minus n equals n times a plus 2. And now we've entered into a really interesting position. Notice that something like this only makes sense if 2n squared minus n is a perfect cube. So notice what we need here is 2n squared minus n to be a perfect cube. So like I said, that's got to be equal to m cubed for some natural number m like that. And then after we have that set up, we have to pick the natural number m so that a times m equals n times a plus 2 has a solution with a, which is a natural number, which was our, one of our original assumptions. So this is a little bit more than I want to get into right here, but maybe hash it out in the comments. And, it's, and if it seems like this problem is doable or sufficiently interesting, I'll go ahead and make a follow-up video. Okay, that's a good place to stop.